ಅನುತ್ತರ ಮಹಾಸಂಯುತ್ ಶ್ರೋತ ಸ್ವಚ್ಛಂದಚಾರಿಣೇ ಅಮೃತೇಶಾನಂದನಾಥ ಶಿವಾಯ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ದೇಶಕಾಲಪದಾತ್ತಾತ್ಮ ಯದ್ಯತ್ವಸ್ತು ಯಥಾಯತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ್ತತ
our life is a is a flow in this time scale it has got a beginning and a end time is endless time the moment it has begun it is going to be there till the uh, dissolution of the whole universe and all so time is uh, now worship of kali now kali will be depicted as uh, uh, you know black in color that is because uh, or dark blue both are black almost or that is because she just originate when nothing was there as a light she comes out that part she is depicted as uh, dark blue or uh, or uh, black in color and normally all the deities are with the four hands with the all kapalam and other things uh, she is depicted with the kapalam mala and as per the jnana shloka now what is kali kali is life in death and death in life what does this mean hmm? is it just a now ka- kali means now uh, the, as we said it is the principle of the beginning of creation and um, what is this death what is li- death in life as we live if we get rid of all our worrying thoughts get rid of all past thoughts and anxieties and love and hatred and ambitions likes and dislikes and we start living in the present see with a kind of a sagaja ananda bhava this is what we call as experiencing death in life this is what exactly kali's worship is we need not confuse with the other uh, with the other forms of uh, worship uh, using this uh, panchabakaras and all but this is the actual tatva behind that similarly what is uh, what is life in death if we understand the concept of death that is not something you know uh, that is uh, not first of all that is unavoidable that is nothing but our own consciousness going to merge with the universal consciousness so if we are aware of this principle and we don't fear death and we don't uh, not that we welcome death also but we don't fear death and as we pass on to the death in a very peaceful in a delightful manner that is called uh, the life uh, that is called life in death mm-hmm. so with this principles now let us move on to the next deity mm-hmm. namely tara the 10 maha vidyas are kali tara tripura bhuvana and tripura bhairavi these five vidyas maha vidyas first five maha vidyas really talk about the evolution of the universe then we have got another five maha vidyas the chindamatha and the dhumavati and uh, bagalamuki matangi and kamalatmika these five mahavidyas are essentially for, for for the individual to worship and attain moksha but he has to all the 10 or together see it is not that you can break uh, you can have a compartment wise break up so now we all the ten are together but to understand that we are having a sequence so after kali now the time has got originated now what is tara tara is the emergence of the sound hmm? and this sound is nothing but om this is the emergence of the sound and tara as her picture depicts she will be carrying a pair of scissors carrying a scissors what does that signify mean at that highest level when nothing has come and she is just uh, you know just emerging out tara devi yes she said this scissors are cutting the time time is a continuous but time is cut into uh, muhurtam day paksham year and all and not only at this high level at the lower level later on when we when we speak bhasha in that bhasha you have got a sentence words and in between the words you have got a small pause of time and within within words also there is a pause of time between one aksharam and another aksharam so tara represents you know the emergence of the sound that is the shabda brahma and now worshiping her means understanding this brahma vidya om as a as a thing from where the whole uh, nirguna brahma has created this uh, became saguna brahma and created this universe and uh, the first thing that happened is 
the emergence of the sound om and from om the shabda prabandham from shabda prabandham the artha prabandham comes so worship of tara tara is also called as neela saraswati why she is called neela saraswati saraswati degree signifies knowledge now from the utter darkness when the time comes out and then the intelligence is used jnana shakti is used for the creation so at the same time she is, since it is the very origin we call it as a neela saraswati later on we are going to talk about shweta saraswati at the mathangi um, mahavidyalaya now this is from tara next comes tripura tripura is the emergence of form a beautiful form that was it is called tripura sundari hmm? and uh, this emergence of the form first at the causal level and at the subtle level and the upanishad say tripura maha now tripura sundari uh, tripura or tripura sundari is depicted as a 16 year old lady and uh, beautiful and if we experience this world the entire world everything in this world as beautiful in fact that is the best upasana that we can do to tripura tripura is appreciating the whole world every aspect of this uh, whatever the creation that is around us even in every small detail appreciating the beauty of the creation and seeing the god everywhere seeing tripura everywhere that is the form of worship so tripura is the emergence of tripura tripura means three sharira three bodies what are the three bodies causal body karana shariram and then subtle body sukshma shariram and then stoola body that is physical shariram or gross shariram so uh, it is the formation of that at that level tripuram is that tripura sundari and next comes bhuvana or bhuvaneshwari or we can call it as uh, together bhuvana sundari because the whole world we just now said is beautiful so bhuvana sundari and um, what is this this is the emergence of the place earlier we said that the the whole prapanjam as we experience is made up of kadesham kalam padartham and atma that is the whole thing is made up of time and space instead of space we should take it as a place hmm? sthanam same word we use as the akasham akasham is also a yes space akasham is also a sthanam is the place where we can reside where we can stand aadaram for all of us so desham kalam and padartham vastu vastu means non living thing and living thing is atma living thing contains desha kala padartanja padartatma the the shloka i said yad yad vastu yatha yatha whatever the vastu that we see all around us see tatad rupena yabhati seeing this whole universe not as a mithya but as a as a creation of devi herself and not only creation devi also does anupravesham and that far as a as devi everywhere existing as a beauty something notable in that something that to be appreciated something that makes us you know uh, happy in usage and that in usage and uh, of that item so devi is everywhere so with this concept if we worship that one it becomes the uh, worship of tripura as well as bhuvaneshwari bhuvaneshwari is the uh, stabilizes the universe with a place for you to stay with a place you know? and bhuvaneshwari also stabilizes with the interacting force of akarshanam and uh, <coughs> akarshanam of one object with another object and with all those things the university gets universe gets stabilized bhuvanangad bhuvana bhuvana sundari the next comes bhairavi tripura bhairavi bhairavi definition wise bishanat rakshanat vamanat i have told the reverse order vamanat means is creation rakshanat protection bishanat is creating a a, a fear of uh, you know a, a kind of a fear now what does this mean tripura bhairavi 
without the so much about bhuvan sundari and tripura sundari no by the way because once this in the creation it is always possible that certain negativity evil forces will dawn upon us asuras will be there asuras are sometimes external very often asuras are our own internal negativity feelings so all these negativity forces of the what is existing in the universe is uh, is destroyed by this tripura by the way so tripura by the way is depicted as as if returning from a victorious war see that is the kind of a image we are uh, depicting about tripura tripura bhairavi so um, tripura bhairavi as such creates individuality this is a little difficult concept don't worry about that means um, now the individual now he has to remain on his own uh, whatever the karma he does papam uh, punyam based on that punajanma and all those things starts so now the in, the individual in relation to the environment in relation to the his own other relatives and all as an individual he is established mm-hmm. and uh, this is the concept of the tripura bhairavi now we the next five vidyas we go into the efforts what we make to attain uh, moksha or the first is chinnamasta chinnamasta is depicted as you know with her own head you know severed and with the other two deities attendant you no know, and from that uh, severed head the three dharas of the blood are flowing out one is taken by the severed head of chinnamasta itself and the other two dharas are taken by the her attendants what does this a bhayankara site refers to no there is nothing great about bhayankaram if you start appreciating beauty in the bhayankaram also or beauty in valor viryam then you will understand uh, that you know it is all not that uh, objectionable it is i said that chinnamasta is starting mahavidya for the individual efforts to attain moksha now what is that that is true yogam yogam means here we are talking about in shakta we are talking about kundalini yoga now we understand that the universe the universe was created and after the creation of the universe whatever that consciousness some small amount some small shesham a small residue was left in a very individual living things living entities that in the human being the entity is in our mooladharam see so that uh, that is that individual consciousness because it is surrounded by our own sadhira mandal now we begin to think different from the universal consciousness and we get a feeling of that is i i i i am that individual okay no problem but this i individual consciousness you will have to do with yogic practice and elevate it from this mooladharam and go up and go up to sagasraram or even right up to dwadasha shandam and get the moksha this kind of a yogic effort is what is signified by chinnamasta chinnamasta is a yogi a yogic effort of attaining uh, you know self realization and in this process there is a immense ananda anubhavam also takes place hmm? so kriya yogis those who are practicing kriya yoga now will understand that kind of anandam now in this yoga process what happens your mind gets dissolved into consciousness see mind manaha and buddhi ahankaram in between there is one concept of chittam chittam is nothing but a, a peculiar com- a certain combination of manas and um, buddhi and actually that principle which stores you the impacts of any um, any good or bad deeds as vasana is called chittam so um, in this chittam that is also the very much re- related with chittam chit and consciousness so now in chinnamatta upasana we have to dissolve our mind into this chit consciousness as we practice the kundalini yoga bhava yoga mantra in other words we are transcending the mind hmm? this is the first we are transcending the mind 
it is a unmani avastha means trying to understand there is something beyond mind at least understand there is something inner mind of the mind itself and in that process of uh, you know yogic thing you will realize uh, self realization that's a big subject by itself we'll go to the next vidya now the next vidya is dumavati appears to be a little controversial because she is projected as a as a, a old lady not even having any bhushanam which out of the bhushanam even this tilak and all is uh, is uh, is thought of as a bhushanam something which gives beauty uh, so nothing she is having but what does that mean it is not a form of alakshmi or any inauspicious thing it represents maturity hard work after the hard work a housewife also is uh, is very tired and suddenly you find that you know in her face you know a kind of a although little young age she now looks like with all the small bubbles of this uh, sweating she appears like a uh, a old lady that actually this dumavati is an aspect of that uh, vidya where actually it is a worshipers of dumavati will get a lot of shakti they it is a, it is they have to be have to be very control have a full control on yourself and because as you worship dumavati what will happen is your own individual consciousness will get melted into the universal consciousness it is uh, as uh, great as that so um, it is dissolving not totally dissolving partly dissolving your consciousness into universal consciousness when you understand these principles of dumavati and um, dumavati also represents parityagam means you know uh, a person who, she has given everything to others and therefore she looks like without any uh, uh, no materialistic uh, thing on her hand that is a concept of altruism altruism means sharing what you have with with others when you actually need that item equally and but other person also needs that for to share that one thing that is called altruism so dhumavati represents that principle of parityagam in uh, sanskrit it is called as parityagam or altruism and uh, and hard work to attain certain objectives in life many whether spiritual objectives or materialistic objective is always obtained by hard work in the dhumavati represents this aspect of that now next comes bhagavamukhi many times we say hard working is not uh, needed intelligent working is needed maybe as a so bhagavamukhi now talks about uh, the actually she is a brahmastra rupini see and uh, that for she uh, she represents you know stambana shakti bhagavamukhi represents stambana shakti in her picture you will see a daman and she is uh, pulling out the dung, tongue of the daman and threatening him to kill him kill him like this what does this picture mean let's see if you very deeply see into that picture without any emotions of any uh, other feelings you will find a great principle there means this is the principle of controlling your tongue the moment you control your tongue see your actions because all your tongue tell certain inner feelings what you have got in speech if they are controlling the speech continuously internally you will become pure your actions will become good others will start appreciating your behavior will change you will become a good person and slowly you will find that your ability to uh, discriminative knowledge goes up and up so in this do um, bagalamukhi the upasana is taken more as a gayatri upasana bagalamukhi devi upasana with her mantra is the vajra vairoshani that name will come and all that bird and all will come now here is a thing where it is to be rightly interpreted as the the vivek but there is asking for the intelligence for all the people the yo yo na prachodayad i mean all for all of them and so that they don't trouble us individual that kind of vivek vritti is what is come along with this vivek vritti the self control self discipline all these things will follow so bhagavamukhi represents you no know, that um, represents uh, yeah, that kind of a divinity 
when you worship when you worship the deity you get uh, you know confidence in your self self confidence and you are gentle in approach you are become likable for all other persons that kind of an ability you will get that now what about the next one is mahatangi mahatangi is ta- is taken as an aspect of saraswati or vakvadini now earlier we talked about controlling the speech now here we are talking about using the speech as a device to improve your knowledge not only in a, in a in a particular manner also in skill development arts sangeetam and all other other related branches which will give you happiness all we want is some kind of an happiness when we enjoying intellectually certain music or natyam bharatanatyam or any other art thing itself gives you a kind of a, a kind of an ananda so now mahatangi represents uh, here the shweta saraswati as i said that earlier neela saraswati here it is shweta saraswati here this is a aspect of higher intelligence and also the kalas and this represents development of talent expertise and skill developments so you are this upasana will give you all those things and along with in a happy frame of mind next is kamalatmika this is the principle of abundance now that we have worshiped the nine different deities and understood all the principles behind them and um, here now that you know you you will you will feel very contented with all the supasara and all and now you will slowly get to the stage of akama siddhi means sarva kama siddhi with whatever you have got you are happy you are contented means what you don't want anything more and therefore it is called akama siddhi you are coming to a level where you are there is no more thing that you desire see and uh, you are happy with what we have got that kind of a thing means you will so by worshiping this kamalatmika with her mantra and with all her uh, a kind of aradhana schedule what you will get is kind of all this materialistic thing you will get and a kind of a satisfaction tripti with whatever you have got also will be there tripti contentment is there also it means that you will get more and more you know these um, materialistic things pleasures and all those things ultimately lakshmi is made up of in sri vidya kalt we take lakshmi as uh, uh, 15 different uh, lakshmi plus one shodasa lakshmi samashti so in the shodasa lakshmi the 15th lakshmi is called as arogya lakshmi why that is arogya lakshmi because whatever the early lakshmis you have dhanya lakshmi dhan lakshmi with all that lakshmis with all that uh, you know prosperities your shariram should be in excellent condition to enjoy that so that is why the last aspect we have put it as arogya lakshmi the sum total of all these 15 lakshmis is mahalakshmi or kamalatmika so now the way of worshiping them avarna pujas and the dhyanas of uh, all these deities maybe in the first few deities it will be a little little uh, uh, you know the dd shape and other thing will look little uh, different and uh, in the mind and all but because they represent kalam actually they are formless like kalam the other deities six of them represent kalam they are called Ka- kali kulam four of them represent uh, you know this is a shri kulam the shri kulam obviously is uh, tripura tripura sundari and the bhuvaneshwari and then uh, we have got that bagla mukhi no, and uh, some there is a confusion some people take bagla mukhi some people take uh, <coughs> mahatangi any one you can take and kamalatmika with these things you know you have got your upasa these 6 plus 4 uh, vidyas together mahavams the swaha vidya and um, you cannot individually one vidya one vidya if we take that one it, our effort will not be uh, that great in understanding the whole thing as a concept you can do upasana of tripura sundari bhuvaneshwari and uh, and even bagla mukhi all these things are separate bagla mukhi since it is told as vak tambaram some people use it as to uh, in arguments and court cases and other things and all they use this uh, worship of bagla devi upasana of bagla devi to get benefit in that uh, you know victory in those cases and that happens 
so these uh, deities can be worshipped individually for certain materialistic benefits they can be also all deities are mahavidyas all the deities will give you the moksham independently and all deities in a sequence when you worship uh, on a day it will be much more beneficial to all of us jai shri matre namaha okay all these uh, upasanas what you have talked about whether you use it for uh, your own uh, moksha purpose or attaining some materialistic benefits all these upasanas you will have to uh, do it you will have to get upadesham in a due manner through your uh, through your guruji through your person who is already well versed in that and through in a guru mandalam you have to get the uh, upadesham in a in a krama manner krama vidhi in upadesham and practice them in a in a in a sattvic manner and then you will automatically get the benefit of that one but the importance of guru is very much there in these vidyas because they are all maha vidyas see and so these vidyas will not be effective unless you get from the guru as well as if you don't get it from the guru there are chances that it may not it may cause some slight harm to you also you yeah. don't have to be upright ultimately every vidya is uh, matritvam vidya means tri devata matritvam but still to get the benefit you must take all these vidya through a guru only so all the devi's grace will come to you through guru through your own guru to you that much and that far it is uh, essential that we take the upadesham of these mantras to guru shri gurave namaha ओम श्री महाते नम